Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Aloha, and welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihiki. We got an interesting show this afternoon. My special guest is a colleague of mine and a regular here at Think Tech Hawaii, Jay Fidel. And we are getting together, Jay, as we have done on, on a number of occasions from time to time, uh, to do a program that we call Politics uber alles, which means politics above all or politics in general, and just talk about the state of politics in Hawaii, the world, and in general. So what you got today, folks, are two wonks, two <laughs> wonks, you know, a little bit more than nerds when it comes to politics. Nice to be here with you, John. No, oh, it's always great. I mean, I've invaded your shows for the same kind of thing, so here you are. Okay, let's get started. Hawaii State Legislature just ended. Uh, depending on who you talk to, you know, the grades are, as usual, mixed. There's yeah. nothing that was really big, but looked like nobody is particularly sad. Except, and here's the thing, Jay, and, and I wanted to talk about that. Except that there were a couple of bills, and something very unusual happened. There were a couple of bills, one that had to do with the airports and maybe making it more efficient and uh, privatizing it, and one that would have updated the um, tax credits. For energy. For energy. Uh, you know, and we can discuss more what they are because what was unusual about all of this was be, these bills were in conference, which meant normally that there is an opportunity for the House and the Senate to, uh, you know, come out with a compromise that everybody's happy. And I guess all the people, there are an awful lot of people supporting these bills, supporting it felt that uh, it, that's, of course, what happened. And yet it didn't. Yeah, it did it because the speaker uh, of the house decided that the members uh, that were part of the conference committee it would be called back. So I, we don't know what happened or why it happened or anything, but um, I thought it would be fun. Jay and I thought it would be fun if we asked the Senate chairperson, Senator Lorraine Inouye from the Big Island to uh, tell us, at least from her point of view, what happened to yeah. those two uh, major bills. Real interested in hearing what she has to say about it, John. Have, have you heard about it ever happening like that before? Or? I, uh, there was a time a few years ago where the conference committees collapsed. Uh, it was late in the evening. I don't know exactly what the mechanics Usually were. Usually they collapse from exhaustion, though, not from the, the <laughs> I think it was exhaustion, hole. yeah. In this case, they were pulled back, as you said, and that's different, and we should find out why. Okay, well, anyway, you're much better at this mechanical stuff. Okay, I'm going to uh, dial. Okay, we are, folks, we are now dialing. Senator Lorraine Noy. Okay. Well, I, I we just um, hoping you know, this telephone does work. Aloha. Right? Ah, hello, Senator. <laughs> this is John Waihe, and I have Aloha. with me. Um, Jay Fidel. Uh, so the hi, Senator. Nice to oh, nice to talk to you. You know, and we were just laying some of the foundation for our conversation. But first of all, tell us what there were two bills that we are interested in, which uh, you were the, involved with trying to get out of the legislature. Both of them sound like there's important things that we should be doing. Maybe we'll start first with the um, with the airport. There was a bill to what? What was the bill about the airport about? Okay. Well, first off, let me make sure I have my phone on speaker. 
So can you hear me well? Oh yes, yeah, it's fine. You're, okay. you're, you're very, we can hear you very fine. All right, otherwise you tell me if I should take it off speaker. Um, it, anyway, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the bill relating to the airport cooperation is SB, which is the Senate Bill 2996. Okay, 2996, SB 2996. Correct, and this was, um, as we all know, was establishing the Hawaii Airport Corporation and uh, to assume all of the authority, which includes, of course, um, the powers, the functions, the duties, the responsibilities uh, of the Department of Transportation uh, relating to aeronautics and the airports. And so um, this is a, would have been a landmark um, decision if it passed because, and you know that as well, Gov, this yes. would have been the first time that a high-powered airport under the jurisdiction of the Department of Transportation in the state that would sever its ties from government operations. And this would be a step in the right direction, as well as um, creating a mechanism so that we can speed up processes uh, such as construction and have a nice airport like we do on the um, on the mainland as well as throughout the world. And so uh, this actually was a big, my biggest setback. Okay, and then, uh, Senator, I'm sure that you just didn't think about doing this, you know, um, just out of the out, out out of space. I mean, you got you actually spent exactly. some time studying it, and exactly, and, and, this was our third try. This was our third try. Okay, and you went to you visited uh, other airports in the in the world, really, that had exactly. been uh, privatized. Exactly, and uh, not only including just myself in the Senate, but accompanied by my colleagues in the House relating to subject matter uh, in the uh, House Transportation Committee and the, and the Chair of the Tourism uh, Committee in the House as well. So, you know, there was so much enthusiasm, you know, that we can um, then proceed with working on legislation, which ended up with Senate Bill 2996. And what happened? I, uh, it looked like from where we are that everything was going well. It looked like you were about ready to come out of conference uh, with a, some kind of compromise uh, bill that would accomplish the idea, and I'm assuming that you're doing this to make the airport more efficient, to get things built exactly. quicker. Yeah. Exactly. And, and it, uh, and at the last minute, the conferees from the House were pulled off the committee. Is that it? Uh, that's correct. At the, uh, I would say, the day of uh, the last day of conference, um, not knowing. Well, we sort of heard that. Uh, during the final week that um, uh, during conference, no indication whatsoever that the bill would die because the House asked us to consider the House draft, which would take out the, um, the procurement uh, 103D out of the measure. And as we uh, got to the, towards the end of the uh, conference, um, that the Senate um, felt uh, in my discussions with leadership, perhaps because we have a three-year trial and uh, the three-year initial uh, start of this corporation, that let's then agree with the House that we include the procurement portion in the bill because of the three-year um, that the authority Right, will so that, that's the normal process of adjusting the exactly. bill. So, both, so but nevertheless, exactly. the, the House... So, um, ne never, nevertheless, um, so the Senate did agree 
uh, and we offered uh, that um, as well to the uh, to the House that the Senate will agree to the House draft, which would have put back the the um, procurement um, language. Um, so that uh, the authority could look at it within this three-year period. Uh, and so nonetheless, it was a big surprise at the last minute when the House decided to give them perhaps another hour because the clock was ticking. And you know, Governor, if there's right. a final uh, time, uh, a limited time at the 6 o'clock uh, deadline that uh, we uh, agreed in the conference committee by the Senate at the request of the House chair that, and the committee, conference committee, um, to delay this for another hour to iron out something. So lo and behold, uh, when the clock started ticking, um, about 4.30, I believe, that there were rumors and there were indications from some of the House contacts to myself uh, as well that the speaker, uh, Psyche, pulled the conference committee of SB 2996 um, and dispensed with the committee. So Which, by the way, meant that you, you, that meant that you were, that was it. I mean, nothing was going to pass this. Exactly. Now, let me ask you, let me ask you, though, uh, they, it seemed that there was a whole lot of support for the bill. And, oh, yes. uh, and, and in fact, uh, just uh, some limited opposition, mostly from people who got government contracts. But this is not the only bill that that happened to. You also had a second bill that was dealing, which I thought was a, a move in the right direction, was dealing with moving some of the tax credits around for energy. I had a Senate bill 2100. Uh, 2100, uh, which would be the uh, tax credit for the um, solar energy, uh, the battery storage. As we all know, we do have already tax credits, um, you know, for uh, the solar and wind. Right. And now we will, yes, we would move in the direction um, of the industry to another level uh, that where it's at in our country as well. And so um, this was also another disappointment. What the House ended up doing was they watered down the complete bill. So at the end of the day, the only uh, the only language that they agreed to was relating to um, the energy storage only for residential. And there was a cutoff date of uh, seven years uh, as well. So, um, Senator, I, uh, I, I guess chair, that the, the reason why I'm bringing up both of these bills is they both seem to have a lot of popular support. And yet, exactly. and yet the these industry, committees were dismissed. Exactly. No, no, not with SB 2100. Oh, okay. Um, we, we did between um, Representative Chris Lee, the energy chair in the House, when this was watered down to only looking at residential energy storage system. Um, and everything, uh, it, it, it would not work. It would not help the industry at all because we um, cut off the, uh, the energy storage tax credit for the commercial side as well. And so it would be deemed um, uh, not worth the effort. And so between Rep. Lee and I, we decided, you know what, this is not going to help at all. So let's defer and, and come back next year again well, as well. Senator, so, we want to thank you for taking the time to, to talk with us. And we want to, you know, keep up the good work. Uh, we, just so you know, that there are people who are watching what you do, and we appreciate what you do. And we hope you put those bills in again next year, Senator, both of them. Uh, we will. We will. And we, you know, just to remind people that there are many of us at the legislature who are there to do the people's work. Well, thank you, Senator. We appreciate your time and your commitment. Thank you, Senator right. Inouye. Aloha. All right. Aloha. Aloha. 
At this time, we are going to take a short break, and we will be right back to talk more about politics. Uber Alice. Hi, I'm Pete McGuinness Mark, and every Monday at one o'clock, I'm the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa. And at that program, we bring to you a whole range of new scientific results from the university, ranging from everything from exploring the solar system to looking at the Earth from space, going underwater, talking about earthquakes and volcanoes, and other things which have a direct relevance not only to Hawaii, but also to our economy. So please try and join me one o'clock on a Monday afternoon to Think Tech Hawaii's Research in Manoa, and see you then. Good afternoon. My name is Howard Wig. I am the proud host of Code Green, a program on Think Tech Hawaii. We show at three o'clock in the afternoon every other Monday. My guests are specialists, both from here and the mainland, on energy efficiency, which means you do more for less electricity and you're generally safer and more comfortable while you're keeping dollars in your pocket. Welcome back to Talk Story with John Waihe'i. We just got through hearing from Senator Lorraine Inoy from the Big Island, who is the chair of the Senate Energy Committee uh, in the Hawaii State Legislature and talking about two important bills. Remember these numbers, folks. Follow up on Senate Bill 2996, which would have privatized the airport, and Senate Bill 2100, which was there to improve the tax credits for the delivery of um, solar energy. Now, we get to play, okay? <laughs> so here I am with my buddy Jay over here. And uh, Jay, what's on your mind? What do we, uh, you know, where do we go with all of this? Uh, it's really, it's, it's too politics, bad. Uber, Alice. Yeah. Uh, what about the common good? You know, both of these bills have been knocking around for three, four years. Mm -hmm. A lot of research and a lot of lobbying has gone in, a lot of testifying, a lot of work has gone in to advance them, and they were right there at the cusp. Yeah, you know, and both of you, them failed. It's such a, it's a bad thing to do, obviously, because, I, and I'm talking about it just from a process point of view. If, you, if you're going to oppose something and you're in the leadership, and you're going to agree with a lobbyist that may be against the weight of the testimony, it's better to do things earlier, <laughs> you know? First, to try and get the parties to find a solution. But you're not supposed to cut it off at the last minute. I mean, that's not a good thing. To I don't. Do. I, you know, I can't imagine how people could like what happened. Whatever side of it you're on, you question the process. Well, yeah. Well, it's like the national scene. You know, with, uh, okay, okay. We, I know we, I, w I was hoping that we could have one conversation, Jay, when you and I don't go into our favorite subject, but <laughs> it's not going to happen today. And that is uh, our president. Uh, talk about not uh, looking out for the common good. I mean, we got a president, and, and this Michael Cohen thing. I, I don't know. You've got to tell me. I don't know where this is all going to go. Well, the great disappointment for me is Rudy Giuliani. Uh, I thought he was a pretty good mayor. He helped uh, he bring law and order to the city. Uh, he was well-liked well by pretty much everybody. The no, time he was, he was he, even when he was U.S. attorney. He was, uh, you know, one of these guys who upheld law and order. Yeah, yeah. And now he seems to have lost all of that. He couldn't give a rip about the common good or law and order, and he is actually part of this effort to lie to the people and confuse the people, which is from the president, from the White House, obvious lies left and right, and Giuliani's right in the middle of it, participating and actually making it worse. Yeah, you know, and, and, and there's this whole thing about um, what happens if the president gets a subpoena, you know, is he above the rule of law? Um, well, he shouldn't be, but I don't we'll think see. he is. I think Giuliani's wrong. Well, uh, you know, this is the crazy presidency, and what is? Well, look at look at uh, Senator McCain. 
I don't want this president to come to my funeral. Right. That's saying something, isn't it? Oh, yeah. I mean, people need to realize that he, McCain was uh, a, um, a war hero. And the exact thing that Trump said about McCain was that he's famous because he got captured. Me, I prefer people who aren't captured. I'll you know, that sounds that. cute. But uh, Awful. In, in my case, for example, my brother-in-law was a POW for th over three years. I mean, it didn't make me feel good, you know. Uh, and he said that. But this is the president that we have. And the constant undermining. Rudy Giuliani is now part of a team whose job it is to undermine the very institutions that he upheld. Yes. Yeah. How could he do that? How could he live with himself? Uh, He's, he, you know, if he went down, he would have gone down well in the history books before. He is not going to go down well in the history books now. No, no not at all. And, um, well, I don't know. You wonder what corrupted him this way. Uh, I, I suggest, John, that, uh, that Trump corrupted him this way. <laughs> yeah. uh, because everybody around Trump gets corrupted. There's no exceptions. And they don't get supported. Right. Yeah. And, what I, mean, I don't know what's the payoff. In know? the end, Giuliani will be fired like the rest of them. Exactly. And, and, and then he'll, be, he'll, get his, he'll have his... Uh, you know, he'll have his career tarnished, he'll, all of this will happen, and for what? For what? You know, yeah. and uh, it's, this it's is a tough president. Yeah. Uh, it's tough pre well, look at, like, uh, some of the others, like Kellyanne Conley, you know? And Another she's in example. there, and she, she tries her very best. Uh, when they hired her, when Trump hired her in the beginning, I thought, well, at least maybe somebody can make some sense out of all of this. And it turns out she's as lost as everybody else. She did else. a lot of lying, too. Yeah, and it's refreshing to actually get a tweet from her husband, <laughs> <laughs> who disagrees with the, the guy's a staunch Republican, by the way. It's not like he's, you know. What, what, what about Hawaii? See, the, the sad thing about what's happening, and I'm going to be heretical right now, you know. Sad thing about what's happening on the national level is that it influenced what will happen in Hawaii. Sure it does. And right now, people in Hawaii are, for the great part, very much uh, in disagreement with what's happening in Washington, which means that the Republicans in Hawaii uh, have a tough role. They do indeed. It, it was tough enough when, he, by the way, I am for a two-party system. I mean, we need one in Hawaii desperately. The first part of our show demonstrates why that. you need it. Yeah. You know, because all you have when you when you don't have a two-party system in Hawaii, what happens is basically you get run by factions. Right. And factions are like the magnet for lobbyists. They'll play the factions against each other. And uh, there is therefore no cohesive policy, yeah. you know. And there's no there's no sunshine either. It's and a see, backroom operation with factions. Well, that's the that's the thing about it. But it's making it harder for them. Look at the Jew. Charles the Jew is probably one of the most conservative Republicans we have ever had run for office in Hawaii. I mean, he, you know, definitely not a Hiram Fong. He is definitely not a pet psyche, <laughs> but he felt that it was important that he change his uh, party uh, membership. Not yeah. change. He, he just left the... Dropped it. He yeah. just dropped it. Yeah. And if that happens, you see, there's something wrong with all of this, you know, especially for those of us that, that, that really believe and hope that government can actually be a tool for good, you know? Um, now, that might not be what some real conservative Republicans think, but in Hawaii, for the most part, people like to believe that um, government can be used to do good things. Well, I, you know, I'm... I'm open about these things, and there's a lot of people who might vote Republican 
might have might have voted Republican on a given measure right. uh, before. Right. But what's what's going on in Washington? It's not just Trump. It's all those Republicans who are way well, over to the, the right. That's the real sickness. Yeah. That's the real sickness. The regime, the Republican and regime. And they would rather be in power. And, and, and a, 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 you know, a, a, operating on self-interest, you know, realizing self-interest every day. It's really sometimes nauseating what they do. Uh, and, and supporting Trump when he's obviously wrong and taking measures that are obviously not uh, for the public and, good. And doing things like undercutting the FBI, the CIA. Now, I don't, be, you know, I'm not one of these guys that say, we ought to protect an institution, right or wrong, but it gets to be, it gets to be really dangerous when we start criticizing our institutions for political gain, just so we can maintain power. But hopefully, hopefully the upcoming elections will, you know, be a change. Maybe we'll have a change. Maybe this whole thing will change. I mean, after all, this is a country that survived the Civil War. This is a country that survived the Great Depression, survived the recession. And what you're saying, though, is it's a big challenge right now. Oh, yeah. And is. our survival is actually yeah, threatened. All yeah. right. Yeah. Well, anyway, it was all, it's always fun to, with, to talk to you. And, uh, you know, Same politics... Thing. Uba Alice is uh, our new <laughs> phrase whenever you and I get together. So, folks, thank you. We will have another show for you in exactly two weeks.